The new COVID-19 vaccine is now available. The Fulton County Board of Health has updated COVID booster shots and flu vaccines to fight the latest variants of each illness. Remember, vaccines work. We've done an excellent job of staying up to date on vaccines, reducing the number of illnesses in our community. Continue to protect yourself and others by making an appointment at the nearest Board of Health location. The Fulton County Board of Health is here to serve you. Stay current. Visit FultonCountyBOH.com or call 770-520-7500 for more info. Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content which may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Oh, we sure do. Oh, yeah. We're going to teach you. We're <laughs> oh, going to teach you. Yeah. For the folks at home, obviously, that's not Kenyan. Who are you? Hello. My name is Patrick Hines. I'm like, my, my biggest claim to fame is that I once got to carry merch or something for you guys at CrimeCon. You, you did do that. <laughs> I carried oh, you all your that. stuff to you. I was cute. so... I was so excited to meet you that I literally <laughs> met you at the door of Podcasters Row I and carried your bags to your table. You're like, you don't have to do that. I was like, yes, I do. Also, our I table, our table was that. like six feet from the door. <laughs> yeah. So you were so enthusiastic and so helpful on that yeah. last six feet. Thank you yeah. so Wait, much. Wait, New Orleans so or welcome. Nashville? That was... Uh, the Nashville, Nashville, I one. think, right? In, yeah. the, in the big Opryland hotel thing. Yes, God, where you're I never outside, that. but they try to make you think you're outside. It's like Vegas. It's yep. very confusing. Very. Mm-hmm. Disorienting. You never know what time it is. <laughs> no, you're right about that. Yeah, it's not great. It's yeah, not great. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> well, but thank apart you from so that much. claim to fame, <laughs> for, yeah. for carrying those. <laughs> My pledge. My pledge. <laughs> So Patrick comes to us from True Crime Obsessed. Uh, among, among among many other things. Yes. True Crime Obsessed uh, is like the matriarch of all of this incredible work that mm-hmm. y'all are doing right now. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have the Obsessed Network. So we mm-hmm. have True Crime Podcasts that are kind of in the same vein, but kind of not. So like True Crime Obsessed is the first one. It's with me and Jillian. There's a show called Obsessed with Disappeared where mm-hmm. Ellen and Joey recap episodes of Disappeared. And then we have Crimes of the Centuries hosted by Amber Hunt, which some of you may know as like just a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is also the host of the <laughs> just, of yeah. Accused. Just. <laughs> and then we have Strange and Unexplained with Daisy Egan. Yes. It's sort of paranormal, but it's also just like unsolved crimes and murders right. and things. I love unsolved that's like, things. Yeah, that's like Lucy's favorite shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, My me ADHD too. My ADHD riddled brain needs like a nice ending with yep. a bow. I you can't. and Jillian are the same. I yeah. like it's the reason I, I like am in this world at all is because of like the mystery and the puzzles. Mm-hmm. No. But then our la- I'll just say so I don't get in trouble. Our other two podcasts are Murder and Alliance hosted by Maggie Freeling and Unjust and Unsolved also hosted by Maggie Freeling. So amazing everything God. that y'all are doing. Yes. Thank you You're so fucking much. You're crushing. We're uh, so thrilled to have you here. And, I love you. Uh, Lucy, who are you? <laughs> Oh, well, that's Patrick. I'm Lucy. I'm Amanda. Host of one podcast. We don't have a list of accomplishments to share with you at the top of this episode. Yes, you do. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. We're incredible. Yes. Exactly. Yep. Yep. We're amazing. I'm not just a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. I'm so much exactly. more than just a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist yep. with flies in her office. Yep. <laughs> Our other co-hosts today are the flies. So welcome to that. Three flies, five flies. I'm especially Look. happy to be here with the flies. Oh, yes, yes. yes. So, Lucy, it's what are we honor. talking about today? You want to introduce our topic? Oh, my gosh. Well, today we have a very special fan pick brought to us by Emily Spindler, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who actually wants to dedicate the episode to us. <laughs> to us. To us. I love this. It's very Casey Kasem. She to dedicate yep. the app. Yep. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes folks will dedicate the episode to their best friend, their partner. It's their anniversary. Yeah, it's the my wife's who birthday. Introduced blah, them blah, blah, to blah. wine and crime. Their oh. gateway gal. But mm-hmm. you know what? We're taking this one, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> and we are fucking awesome. So congratulations yes. to us. And Emily thought of a really fucking fun topic that we have not covered yet, and that topic is CIA crimes. Oh, oh my the CIA Lord. is crazy. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm and so fucking excited for this. So shall we just jump right in with Amanda's wine crime pairing? Yes, we shall. Um, I have chosen today another selection from our friends over at Wink Wine Club. And if you are not familiar with Wink Wine Club, they're an online wine club that delivers wine directly to your door. Literally the greatest invention known to man. It was like the wheel Slice bread <laughs> and then wink wine club. It was like those three yeah. vaccines. Vaccine. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Shout out to vaccines, but mostly shout out to wink wine club. <laughs> um, and they have an incredible rotating inventory. So while we have featured a wine of this name before, I don't know if we've. No, we haven't featured this specific one. Uh, not this varietal and not this vintage. So I'm very excited about it. And if you'd like to try Wink out for yourself, head to trywink.com. That's T-R-Y-W-I-N-C.com forward slash gals to get 20 bucks off your first box. It's totally wow. worth it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good deal. Do you all get a ton of free wine? Oh, I mean, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes and no. We are, Our budget for wine through the company is bigger than it should be. Yeah, <laughs> but it is it is an office supply yep. expense. Yes, so absolutely. Our tax person said, "Yeah, we call don't make the them. rules." Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't so make the rules. <laughs> for today's episode, I am pairing the far and wide Zweigelt, which is an Austrian grape varietal, Ooh. and I picked far and wide because I feel like it reflects the reach of the CIA. It sure does. Uh, <laughs> which is like really creepy. It's too far and too wide. Mm-hmm. And this is the 2020 vintage. I'm just going to read you some fun facts that they have on the back of their label. This says far and wide explores varietals from the far reaches of the globe, just like the CIA. Like Zweigelt, the most widely planted red wine grape in Austria. So this is like Austria's Cabernet. Okay. This is their grape, baby. This is complex while still being lighter in body and bursting with red fruit. It is a quintessential expression of this fresh and elegant grape. So you can see it's going to have some similarities to a Cabernet, but it's going to be a lighter and I think even more like food friendly Mm. wine than a Cabernet. Because Cabernet can get to be a little bit too much of a palate blaster if you're, you know, not getting the good stuff. She's 13.1 ABV, so you could drink pretty much a whole bottle and obviously not drive, but not be, like, calling your exes. (laughs) Lit. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) That's a really good barometer of, like, how much booze is in the wine. Right. You're not going to, like, give yourself bangs. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You're not going to give yourself bangs, but do not operate a motor vehicle. She's also, like... Try gay stuff for the first time. I mean, you <laughs> well, might. You, know what I mean? you might. You never know. It is. It is a sexy wine. I don't need all. much wine to try gay stuff for. <laughs> certainly not the first time. <laughs> not even fucking close to the yep. first time. Yeah. Uh, she's also a popper, so we're gonna get a fun sound effect here. Uh, are you ready to hear this? I can't wait. Oh my god! I didn't put on lotion, so I nailed it. Here we Good. go. Yes. Oh, that's a nice pop that right an there. an excellent pop. I oh. love it. Is anyone else drinking today or no? This is it just uh, me? I, I, I guess I forgot. I should have brought something to drink. I'm just curious if, like the CIA, that wine can also not investigate crimes within the United States. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's <laughs> right. Probably. That was one of my fun facts. Ooh, I gotta well. tell you, I heard that fact for the second time today. I was listening to the lady who took over for Rachel Maddow. She's got like her own show and it's a podcast. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. And they were talking about the CIA. And that was where I first heard today that the CIA can't investigate crimes in the United States. It's and then true. I read it in the outline for this episode. Well, there you go. Well, because that's the FBI's job. Yes. Let's get to some more fun facts then. Lucy, what's our background in psych about? CIA crimes? If yeah. There's any, there might be psych. Yeah. I have psych. There's not, so I gotta shake my bones. Oh, shake your bones. There's no psych. Okay. Patrick? Patrick is yeah. like, what the fuck is going on? Are these we are shaking snake ribs. These are I mean, snake oh ribs. Oh my God. <gasps> these are dog teeth. Or maybe yes. these are goat teeth. These are some kind of tooth. Whoa, that one's really sharp. I know. Fancy. The teeth the are heavy. Yeah. And then we have an assortment, again, from Kayla. So when Lucy does the background in psychology portion of our show, if there is indeed no psychology, she shakes a 
jar of bones. Oh. It's become a thing that we do that I don't remember why we do it. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember why either. No, oh, fine. because I got a bunch of goat tail bones from my oh. friend Greg. And I didn't have anywhere to put them, so I put them in a jar, and they happened to be in my office. And then I was just mm. shaking them. And what's and we your liked friend it. Greg Steele? He sounds like a weirdo. <laughs> he uh, owns and operates a hunting farm just wow. south of Des Moines, and he yeah. also has um, his own shop called Greg's Bones, I think. But he does Love a lot that. of taxidermy. Good wow. for him. He currently yeah. has a lion head in his kitchen. <laughs> Luck, Greg. Yeah. Oh, Greg. He's fantastic. Um, I have a lot of his pieces. Actually, Patrick, I just followed you on Instagram about an hour ago because I realized I wasn't following you previously. So, wow. oh my God. You can check out my Instagram and see all my I will. articulated skeletons. <laughs> Welcome to a bunch of pictures of my kid. <laughs> oh my God. So cute, though. Love. Thank you. Oh, Miss Daisy. Miss Daisy. Oh. God bless. Sassafras. Cutie. Okay, so from Wikipedia, the Central Intelligence Agency, also known as the CIA. I love that you have the pronunciation in your notes of <laughs> CIA. Cut and copy, copy paste from Wikipedia. I'm obsessed and I love it. <laughs> okay, and I'll I leave want it in. like a t shirt that just says that on the it. CIA. <laughs> Known informally as the agency and historically and informally as the company. So do you think that Mauricio and Kyle Richards like sued the CIA for using the agency because that's what the name of their real estate company is? Well, that was informal. Oh, okay. Then never mind. That answers my question. (laughs) Yeah. They probably didn't sue then. (laughs) They'd probably have more grounds to sue the Culinary Institute of America because they also go by the CIA. But I don't I don't. I mean, that would be like a corporate identity. I don't think a government agency falls under that category. <laughs> Fine. I got to say, too, the company is like a way sexier name. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's the so company. mysterious. Yeah, the agency. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm. Especially when spies are talking amongst themselves, like the company. Yeah. Totally. Hot. <laughs> so the company is a civilian foreign intelligence service of the federal government of the United States, officially tasked with gathering, processing, and analyzing national security information from around the world, far and wide, mm, one might if say. If you will, if you will, and Ooh. I will. <laughs> Primarily through the use of human intelligence, which is shortened to human. I mm. loved that. I read that. I was like, human. Human. No, I hate it. <laughs> As someone who likes mint in a cocktail, I'm really uh-huh. going to have a hard time getting past human now uh-huh. every time I'm muddling. <laughs> you know what they should sell at the Temple of Eck in Chanhassen, where their Hugh. love song to God mm. is singing Hugh, H U. Mm-hmm. When you leave, you should get a free Hugh mint on your way out. Totally. Like an after you dinner should- mint, an after prayer mint. Wow. Definitely call the Temple of Eck and make that incredibly good suggestion. I will. And then let me know how that goes. (laughs) Okay, I'll call. (laughs) And they also perform covert actions. Its Mm -hmm. motto is, quote, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Okay, drama queens at the CIA. (laughs) I know. Honest to God. Wow. Here's a bit from my lover Encyclopedia Britannica. The CIA is the principal foreign intelligence and counterintelligence agency of the U.S. government. Formally created in 1947, the CIA grew out of the World War II Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS. Mm -hmm. Previous U.S. intelligence and counterintelligence efforts had been conducted by the military and the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Ever heard of it? Federal Biscuit <laughs> Investigator. Fe- oh. <laughs> I'm realizing at 2.30 in the afternoon as I drink this glass of wine. You haven't eaten I yet today. I have eaten one. It's Halloween candy season in our house because it's uh, after yeah. September 1st. Yep. Yeah. So I've had a Halloween candy Twix and I, or no, Kit Kat. And I've had a Halloween candy Reese's and that's it. Wait, are you stocking up because you're afraid, like, the Walgreens is going to run out and you won't have anything to give out? Or you just, like, you like to buy it and eat it? She just wants to eat it for breakfast. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) I got to tell you. are on your own. I know. The candy corns are arriving on the shelves earlier and earlier every year. And I, unlike the early arrival of Christmas, which does harm me personally, (laughs) the early arrival of Halloween, 
Love it. Welcome yeah. it. Bring it on. Like it's such August, a short season. August who? I don't fucking care about her also, at all. Like somebody <laughs> tell me why we have pumpkin spice lattes and not like caramel and not um candy corn lattes. Like, wouldn't you drink the shit out of that? I mean, Ooh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. No. Um, and I, I'm not I, a candy corn gal. I am a candy corn gal, but I don't think I would drink a candy corn latte. But I totally. Love and admire your entrepreneurial spirit, and I hope that you can launch this endeavor successfully. So, kids coming on soon humans. From, coming yeah. soon from the, the Obsessed corn Network. Corn. I was going to say, I'm, I'm set, the Obsessed Candy Corn la- obsessed Latte. Obsessed with Candy Corn. <laughs> the newest latte at your local Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Oh, my God. Look. Oh. I don't go anywhere without her. Honey, oh. I saw that immediately and was like, fuck. I, I love Dunkin'. I spent just like one day in Boston a week or so ago just to see my family. Yeah. And all, I was like, Ashley, my sister, I'm like, Dunkin' drive through. let's go. Because we like, don't have them in the Midwest. We have like oh, one. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> we have caribou here, which is really great, but Dunkin' Donuts has so but much more to offer. I was going to say, the point is that it's bad. It's like caribou, I'm sure you're delicious. I, like, I, Dunkin's an experience. No, it's, it's the McDonald's of coffee. Is it like it's a waffle so house? Good. Yes, yeah, but totally. with a drive through Okay. Yeah. It smells like Dunkin'. Oh. I'm sorry, and their food options are like incredible. They really are. You can't tell me a bacon, egg, and cheese on a toasted everything bagel isn't what you want every morning. Every fucking morning. Yeah. I'm With a side so of out candy of my corn. element. I've I never talk been about to Duncan a Dunkin'. In every day. You've never been to a Dunkin'? We don't That's have them here. A, that, and I, I don't drink coffee. I'm I'm with you on the squealing, but it's not weird for people in the Midwest who have never been to a Dunkin' Donuts. I'm f- originally from the East Coast, wow. so like it's it's part of our lifestyle. I love that you have to like defend you do. your I brethren. Do. I do. I do. Like we can buy, we can buy the Dunkin Donuts like Keurig cups at our yeah. grocery store, but we like don't have Dunkin Donuts here. We have like two locations, maybe one. I know. It's really sad. It's wow. really sad. We're missing out. It's a whole cultural thing that we don't get to be a part you of. You know, in the I learned this information and the queen dies in the same week. It's mm-hmm. just been a lot. It's mm-hmm. just it's just been a lot for me this week. Yeah. Take a rest. Take a you rest and we'll talk you so to you much. more give about your, the CIA. Yeah. Give yeah. yourself yeah. some grace. Yeah, yeah give totally. yourself some grace, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> give yourself some grace. I love that phrase. Ooh. What does it even mean? I don't know. I say it all the time. Just be kind to yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> America uh, runs on Duncan. Anyway, yes. thank you. Okay. Previous intelligence efforts had been conducted by the military and the FBI and suffered from duplication, competition, just like they were way bitchy to each other. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> infighting. Yes. And lack of coordinations, uh, problems that continued to some degree into the 21st century. So mm. the U.S. was actually way late to the counterintelligence game. Information, like I just said, was all over the place. It was being collected by the Office of Naval Intelligence, the U.S. Army Intelligence, and the FBI. So, like, the, it isn't like the Army and the Navy are already like, meh, meh, meh. And, well, like yeah, all these nothing, different branches. There and, was no like one main spot for all the sensitive shit. But Can also, I, they were keeping shit from each other just because they didn't like each other's out of agencies. Spite. So yeah. this is what I was going to say. Like, we figured out how to centralize, like, top secret information. Great. Can we now take that and apply it to, like, murder investigations? Wouldn't that I be know. nice? I know. Wouldn't that yeah. be so You know what great. I mean? Yeah. Yes. Like, it, I, I guess the point is we now know it can be done. So let's right. just go ahead and do it. On a massive scale. Yeah. 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 So, to a degree. There is some, there is still a little bit of rivalry. I'll kind of get to it. But it's sure. like. It used to be way bad and way not productive for, you know, our operations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so no one was sharing information with with each other, and sometimes information wasn't even being passed up the chain to the president, for example. Well. Well, here's your example. Because of rivalries between Army and Navy intelligence offices, which did not want to jeopardize the security of their own information— U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was not given sensitive information about Japan in the months leading up to the the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. Hmm. So, like, it was a detrimental. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, honestly, how many people died? A lot. A lot. Yeah. 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 So probably could it it would be reasonable to say that could have been prevented to some degree mm-hmm. had the communications been not so fucked up. Mm-hmm. So obvi, this needed to be remedied. In June of 1942, Roosevelt created the OSS, the operate, uh, what did I say it was called? It was like the World War II version of the CIA. 
-hmm. the Office of Strategic Services, putting a very, shall we say, creative man named William J. Wild Bill Donovan in charge. You don't want the nickname as someone who's marrying a William. (laughs) This You don't want a man who's like a higher up in the government to go by Wild Bill. Yeah. There's a red flag there. This was FDR. This was him. This Mm -hmm. was his man. Uh So Donovan had a lot of ideas. For example, he supported the use of exotic poisons against enemy targets and also once proposed the use of bats to deliver incendiary weapons against Japan. Wow. He's a I mean, creative I guess he, man. Po- points you, for you creativity. Don't know it, right. You don't know it doesn't work till you try it once. Right. Right. Yes, you know, exactly. again, hearkening back to gay sex in college. Exactly. <laughs> you don't buy a dress without trying it on. And exactly. you got to try on a lot of dresses to know what dresses you like. Yeah. Right. You can like one dress and love the next one. Oh, my God. I like so many different dresses. (laughs) (laughs) I got a a closet full. I have two closets and four dressers. I like a lot of dresses. (laughs) Wow. I have like, I own four shirts. Yeah, you're like my, you're like my fiance. Yeah, I don't, I'm not. I'm like, I'm going full Steve Jobs. I just ordered six black V-neck t-shirts from The Gap the other day. I'm like, I'll just wear that every day and then I never have to think about it ever again. Go full Elizabeth What's-Her-Face and just start doing the black little mock turtleneck. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she took that from Steve Jobs. Worked for her. I got the the personality sparkles. That's all the flair you're getting out of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's enough, I think. (laughs) <laughs> those, some would argue more than enough it's in those stunning blue eyes of yours dose. i mean yes, come thank on you so much yeah you're always wearing a little dash of color yeah exactly you, you don't need a sassy shirt yeah you're good right. thank you're good. you so much yeah, but if anytime. you do you can get one at wine and crime podcast at big <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> nicely done okay so despite an unorthodox leadership the oss was successful so by the time the allies invaded normandy in 1944 with amanda's grandpa at mm-hmm. the helm mm-hmm. the wow. oss had about 500 agents working inside occupied france so Damn. it worked it big yeah After the war, the OSS was dismantled, but Harry Truman, like the next guy, recognized the importance of a coordinated post-war intelligence establishment. So in 1947, Congress passed the National Security Act, which created the National Security Council, the the NSC, which birthed the the CIA. From its loins. Beautiful, bouncing baby boy CIA. <laughs> Screaming and covered in excrement came the CIA. Excrement. <laughs> well, you know, there's that blood and, like, that cheese that's on babies, yeah, that cottage cheese. Excrement is poop. Yeah, well, there's also Viscera, oftentimes that. Viscera. Effluvia. So you know, the truth of the matter is, them. these ladies sometimes are in labor for, like, 40 hours. Yo. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And look, if there if you're a baby and you come out with some poop on you, you look at your mother and you say thank you. Yeah, go that was luck. hard. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> just did. you. Uh, yeah. If Kenyon, if Kenyon has taught us anything, it is that childbearing is a horrifying hellscape of extended torture, and we should yeah. all be so lucky to have been born. Yes. Yeah. Honestly, I what honestly don't treat. know why anybody has siblings. Like, why would anybody it's do that twice? Why do people go back and do it again? I don't fucking get it. Hormones? Okay. I know. I don't. Lack I... of access to health care? Abort mm. Abbott? Okay, yes. That. That. that I get. I mean the people who willingly go back and do it again. Right. The amount I bow down to women on Ugh. every single thing. The Ugh. amount that like men could not handle. And I know I'm not like <laughs> inventing this idea. Oh, but no. like if men hot were take. to like yeah, hot take. <laughs> if men had to give birth, the, the planet would have died out. Adam oh. would have been like, no thanks. Bye bye. <laughs> that would have yeah. been it. Yeah. I'm good. No. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. No. I, yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. no. yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So beautiful bouncing baby boy CIA was birthed. Uh-huh. At the time, there were still rumblings of like what we're saying, the bullshit rivalries between the agencies. But the law made it clear that the CIA was the country's preeminent intelligence service. Therefore, they had to pass information up through the, these channels. It's the tap dag. Mm-hmm. 
Unlike the FBI, as Patrick mentioned, which is a domestic security service, the CIA has no law enforcement function and is officially mainly focused on overseas intelligence gathering with only limited domestic intelligence collection. So there is a little bit, but they are not law enforcement technically. It's just intelligence. Mm -hmm. And they do almost none of it within the U.S. Mm -hmm. It seems like more fun to work for the CIA than the FBI, right? A thousand thousand percent. percent. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, great. How does one get recruited? Like, do you apply for that? Do you go to, like, CIA.gov and apply? Or, like, how does that happen? I'm going to CIA.gov and seeing if they have jobs listed. (laughs) Yeah. I will answer this before the day is through. Okay. I'm excited to find out. And while you're there, submit an application. You never know. Honestly, you know. the, website, the website is short for sleek. application. Yeah. <laughs> oh, second tier uh, careers. Click. Wow. Advance nice. your career and protect the nation. Done. I feel like you sh- you have to have like a military background. I'm viewing all jobs. There's probably a lot of administrative <laughs> stuff open. Well, there I'm is. Very, very, yeah, I'm very proficient in Excel and Microsoft yeah. Word. I think I could get a job at the CIA. Listen, like it's hard. I a took government Spanish job in is... high school. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Boring. It's boring. Exactly. <laughs> Um, Okay, so although the CIA is often considered the U.S. counterpart to the Soviet KGB, Mm. at least when the Soviet Union existed, the CIA is forbidden by law from conducting intelligence and counterintelligence operations on domestic soil. Why does that sound like that's the opposite of what I just said? Because you were you said that like there were some exceptions. There are some exceptions. Yeah, I don't know. It's somewhere between a very little and none. We'll just put it that way. Mm. Yeah. In contrast, the majority of the KGB's operations took place within the Soviet Union and against Soviet citizens. Mm. So, okay. yeah. so the CIA the KGB is, is shady as fuck. Yeah. No offense, Russia. Right. Well, oh, offense. also full offense, Russia. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> We're not here to protect you. <laughs> what if this is where I was like, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, just hear me out. Here's here's the thing about Russia, you guys. Oh, wow. No, I love it. I love it. Bring it on. Well, now that we're talking, I wasn't going to say anything, but... <laughs> but, like, have you seen that incredible shirtless picture of Putin, like, on a horse? Like, Yeah, exa- exactly. <laughs> have you seen the episode of the Golden Girls where Rose has a dream that she wins a skating championship in Russia? Yes, yes. You know and, what I mean? Mm, yeah, that's it enough isn't- to be a Russia sympathizer for life. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. <laughs> yep. Until she is, like, detained for having a THC vape and then given, like, 18 years in Russian prison. But you know, And Jesus why are we Christ. talking about that story 24 Yo, hours a fucking day? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think we know why we're not talking yeah. about it, and it's uh, it's ridiculous. But yeah. anyway, that's another anyway, episode entirely. Yeah. Bring me back yeah. for that one. She's just, she's just sitting in prison right now. It's, f- uh, ugh. it's really, yep. really horrible. Terrifying. Save Britney. It's the yep. new Save Britney. Yeah, yeah. the free, the, the true free, free Britney, Britney movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, also, weren't there negotiations about like trading prisoners? Like whatever happened yes, to that? Yes, that's it's in the works. But the person that Russia wants is like a notorious arms dealer who's responsible for the deaths of like probably like, thousands and thousands of people. The Ooh, reason they okay. detained her in the first place was to make it's, a switch, yeah. like, was a bullshit reason to like yep. make a, a switch like this. Mm. Yep. So it's yeah. likely They're going to happen because the U.S. is like, she needs to be returned there safely. Are too many but eyes yes. on this. Yeah, it's yes. just a really tough pill to swallow the trade that Russia is is proposing. So anyway, listen to The Daily. There's a whole episode about it. From the New York yeah. Times, it's but really it's also, nuts. Like Amanda keeps saying, like they're intentionally not bringing eyes to it. They yep. want it to be all very quiet. Yeah, mm-hmm. racism is a very real thing, and it shows up in our media in like a lot of insidious ways. And one of them is by having it not show up in the media. Like yeah. if this were a professional white female athlete who was detained Hed- in heterosexual. Russia, heterosexual, yeah. like there would be fucking absolute pandemonium in the media about this yeah and that is just a fact yeah what i meant was she's already a public figure so people already know about it so the u.s isn't able to just cover it up and be like oh sorry right right so they're trying it's kind of like a barbra streisand syndrome thing where it's like we're just going to try not to talk about it well and i think the other (laughs) argument too is that like the more publicity it gets in america the stronger putin's like the 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 more cards the Russians right they hold. have to play yep, yeah exactly yeah. so so it is a complex situation but there's 
a lot of racism at play in this situation as well. But anyway, mm-hmm. that's like we said, totally different topic. But totally, totally. That's Russia. We did but do KGB Russia. crimes relatively recently. So. We did. We did. Head on We're back on and listen to that. Yeah. In which we don't talk about Brittany Griner. That's okay. We don't. So there mm-hmm. are four main components of the CIA. So the first is the intelligence directorate that analyzes intelligence by looking at the news media, satellite imagery, information from agents in the field, and interception of communications. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Directorate of Science and Technology, which is responsible for keeping the agency abreast of Short new technology. Scientology. <laughs> Directorate of Scientology. Yep. So they pay attention to new technologies. They carry out technical operations. So, for example, they deal with, like, the satellites. They run the CIA's TikTok account. <laughs> I assume. This, they have a really robust sound... Twitter, actually. Right. Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah. uh, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and this they, interesting to me. Like, if I was going to work in the CIA, I'm not like a sciencey person, but like, this sounds. I'd like to know like what secret technologies exist out there. Honestly, that I don't want to know about the only requirements for an applicant are that you are a U.S. citizen and dual U.S. citizens are also eligible. That you are at least 18 years of age. That you are willing to move to the Washington D.C. area, and that you are able to complete security and medical evaluations. So, honey, wow. go on the CIA's Twitter. <laughs> Apply right now. You would crush it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you really would. So, you really would. The Directorate of Science and Technology is basically like. The engineers, like the science, well, the science and technology people. Mm -hmm. There is a communications officer uh, position available. (laughs) They also monitor foreign media, I think probably because there's a lot of like linguistics language stuff in that. Then they have the Directorate of Administration, which is the nerd department. Plus, they mm-hmm. root out spies within the CIA because mm. they have to be aware of careful of like counterintelligence. And finally, the Directorate of Operations is the exciting one. So this is the the section that's responsible for spying. Yes. Espionage. The good stuff. The good stuff. The real meat and taters of the yeah. CIA. Oh. Yum. Don't talk about food. I am so hungry. <laughs> so hungry. <laughs> and a special covert and often illegal operations, including subversion. So they're not even trying to say that they don't break the law mm-hmm. all the time. They're just right. above the law. Sure. So clandestine activities are carried out under various covers, including the diplomatic cloak used by virtually every intelligence service, as well as corporations and other front companies that the CIA mm-hmm. either creates or acquires. Mm-hmm. Despite the elaborate nature of some covert operations, such activities represent only a small fraction of the CIA's overall budget. Hmm. So I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. We've talked before about black sites, I think, in the weird torture episode. So I don't want to get into that kind of stuff today. But mm-hmm. I do mm-hmm. have some weird facts about the CIA for us. Okay. It is reported that the average CIA employee has to undergo a polygraph examination every three or four years. Mm. Well, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Just lie. I do it all the time. Yeah, that's what I always do. Just lie. God, I wish I had anything to hide. Wouldn't that be interesting? I know. I do think about that. It's like, I don't don't have any secrets. Literally, the world knows everything about me that there is to know. I know. I know. It's really sad. Yeah. Oh, well. (laughs) The CIA reads up to 5 million tweets every single day. That is Patrick's new job. I, yep. But to me, that sounds like the torture. We were like that. I thought you would have covered that in the torture episode. Like <laughs> reading like through Twitter to the yeah. tune of five million tweets. And oh, my Lord. I would. I would hate that. I yeah. Would yeah. Hate that. Yeah. OK, this was my favorite. Well, uh, in my top three favorite facts. Known okay. as store number one, there is a Starbucks in the lobby of their headquarters in Langley, Virginia, but they don't write your name on the cup they don't ask Mm. for your name Mm because they're all spies they're all in the fucking okay i love that there are also only nine baristas there and they have to undergo extensive background checks in order to like are these people getting paid more than the average starbucks barista they fucking better be you know what i I mean they probably are because they will have to i mean they i'm sure they have to sign papers a ton of paperwork like it's probably a higher risk place to be because you'd be a target of attacks but probably. wouldn't it Imagine be an incredible like, plot for like 
a novel, like a spy yes. novel. You're yes. like a KGB guy and you got to kidnap the lady who works at the Starbucks. Yeah. In the barista. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be a like a venti latte joke in there somewhere. Like totally. a quippy title of this ro- weird CIA Starbucks barista romance novel that's formulating in my head. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yes, love exactly. it. Mm-hmm. Got to get my fanfic on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Also, because they have to be so subtle about like people's names and identities. Mm -hmm. They have to kind of have, like, fairly special training, maybe not special, but they have to go above and beyond in recognizing people with their Mm -hmm, orders and stuff like that. I'm positive they get paid more than the average. They should, yeah. Can you imagine if they were just, like, did not give a fuck, like, subway employees? Well, I I feel like, Amanda, you apply for one of those, like, communications jobs, and they bring you in, and they actually train you to work at the Starbucks. (laughs) You know what I mean? This is what would happen to me. This guy's a government job. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry. You, we do not have a position for you in the five million tweet crew. Yeah, no. <laughs> but we do have a management spot at in our the lobby. Really Starbucks. <laughs> I Welcome worked at a Starbucks lobby. when I was in college. That's a hard job. It is so. Being a barista is such a fucking. Hard I would job. not want to do. It. It's just so very high stress. It's so hot. The yes. lines do not stop. It is relentless. You're burning yourself Plus all fucking day. Plus you have a day. drive-thru. Are you fucking kidding? Patrick's so upset he just knocked his camera over again. again? I can see it. I, I can see what it. What is happening? It's You're because, getting like, mad. I'm there, but mm. only employees are allowed inside. I don't okay. get this. It's I like, wouldn't. Aren't there, like, aren't museums built for people to experience them? And, like, learn things? Well, yeah. it houses some fascinating yet failed projects like dragonfly drones robotic fish, and pigeon-mounted cameras. But so like, what's, okay. so like, it's like if spy it, shit. But if it's things that didn't work, why can't everybody see it? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I'm, not, rules, I'm sorry, Patrick. I'm not yelling at you. Well, I feel no, like I you are. are. It's Lucy's fault. <laughs> <laughs> Make the museum accessible. Exactly. <laughs> I think the employees are allowed to, like, get special clearance for, like, a their guest spouses pass. or something. Yeah, like it's a like guest a planet pass. fitness. Yeah. It's it not- also just seems like a big operation. Because once you've gone to that once, aren't you never going back? You know I what would I mean? never. I would never right. go back. To the no. museum? No. Yeah. It's also so it's- eleven thousand square feet. It's a big that museum. That is too fucking much. <laughs> it I must know. go like weeks at a time where there's nobody comes through except for the new barista. Oh, uh, you yes. know what I mean? Wouldn't mm-hmm. you love to be a docent in that museum? Yeah. No. That'd be so boring. You would talk to no one. You'd play best fiends in the dark all day. It sounds incredible. <laughs> You're right. That doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> okay. Did you know? Which, no, you didn't. The CIA bought the rights to and funded the film adaptations of 1984 and Animal Farm, which I first misread as Animal House. Not the same thing. Same. I did the same thing. National Lampoon's Christmas (laughs) Vacation. (laughs) Oh, my! I knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes deep, you guys. It's it's deep. The deep state. Mm Mm-hmm. So George Orwell died in 1950 and the CIA thought it was someone convinced someone to buy the rights and make movies out of these. Uh, okay. Why not? Whatever. Why the exactly. fuck not? It was right. a passion project. This was like, oh my God, taxes are due and we have a surplus. What do we spend this money on uh-huh. so that we don't have to pay? A pizza party. On? Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Make that movie. Here we go. Okay, this was my favorite fact, for obvious reasons. In the 1960s, the CIA tried to turn cats into cyborg spies. No. By surgically implanting an audio transmitter, a battery, and a microphone into the cat. That's fucked up. Just put it on a little collar. You don't have to, like, put it in the cat. Spy. Uh, There were spies. They called it Operation Acoustic Kitty. No. Uh. Which, like, subtle. (laughs) <laughs> I don't understand. Like, how does that? I I don't understand. Like, are they? How are they trying to use that thing to get the cat to do something? So they probably are sending the cat into a room where it will like wouldn't be very uncommon for a cat to wander in, and then like recording oh. people having conversations would be my guess. Yep. Yes. Okay. Exactly that. Okay. But to Patrick- I thought they were somebody like on a walkie-talkie being like, "All right, <laughs> okay, all right, cat. All right, Snowball." We're Snowball. gonna need you to we're gonna need you to walk over to Putin's drink and drop 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 the tablet in there. You know what I mean? I was like, how are you like speaking fluent cat? I don't get it. Oh my god! And the cats just have absurd cat names. Like, okay, Pinky Boots. 
Ghost face. I ribbons. Ghost face. Ribbons. Yeah. Ribbons. <laughs> Pepperoni. <laughs> Scraps. <laughs> Scraps. My, if it was my daughter's cat, it would probably be called Daisy Speedy Cat. Yes. All right, Daisy Speedy Cat. <laughs> Or it's like Here's that one dog that the, that family let their kids name, and its name is like Spaghetti Batman. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Okay, so this mission, believe it or not, failed when they couldn't get the cat to do what they wanted it to do. Yeah, fucking duh. And then once, they like, f- of all the animals, too, like right. the cat. As soon as the cat has any idea what you want it to do, it's going to do the other thing. Yeah, you know bye-bye. what I mean. Yeah. yeah, and I would be the one to ruin the whole mission by like. Picking the cat up, oh, taking yeah. it in to get checked for a chip. <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're like, there's a chip, all right. <laughs> mm-hmm. But once they finally had a cat that was working out, the cat got hit by a taxi and died. Stop. What? Oh, no. no. Lucy. The project cost about $20 million. <laughs> no. <laughs> no fucking way. It got, I'm reading it in the notes. It got hit by a taxi. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I love this. And I hate it. This one's depressing and concerning. The CIA uses Amazon's cloud services to house all like, their what? information. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> yeah. But her emails, you guys. Yeah. But yeah. Her emails. I have absolutely no surprise or real reaction to that <laughs> fact at all. Like, duh. duh. Yeah. Of well, course. you'll have a reaction to this one. They also okay. narked on Nelson Mandela in 1962, leading to his arrest and imprisonment for 27 years. Uh, That's a huh? part of the story that gets left out, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The CIA, the CIA does some really fucked up shit. Is yeah. not great. No. In the 1950s, the CIA invested in teaching their agents some magic tricks, like sleight of hand distraction stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like they brought in Neil Patrick Harris to mm-hmm. do like a seminar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably. Is he a magician? Yeah. He is. <gasps> Neil Patrick Harris, like, he's a member of the Magic Castle in LA, which is like I'm invite obsessed only. With that. Yeah. I want to go there so bad. Can he has you imagine? a very specific set of skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the guys being like, is that Doogie Hauser? Doogie <laughs> Hauser doing magic. How to be- yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and last but not least. The CIA doesn't always use money to barter for intelligence. For example, mm-hmm. during the Vietnam War, the Vietnamese farmers were often paid in tools because it was more valuable to them. Yeah. And probably in a lot of these places, they're just like money. Like our economy is so fucked. doesn't mean it. Like, okay. You know. In my case, which we'll get to, some of the folks are paid with some money, but mostly like... Uh, get out of jail free cards like the police won't bother you mm. we're gonna put a like safe immunity zone around almost. you yeah oh we'll get to why oh good yeah yeah well speaking of being paid and not money also an afghan chieftain was once paid for intelligence on the taliban in viagra like a I mean, lot of viagra <laughs> i'll take it yeah wow <laughs> hi yeah so that is my segment i hope you learned Something. I learned a lot of stuff. I gotta tell you, I I know about a hundred percent more about the CIA now than I did an hour ago. I Good. would agree with that. I also know a hundred percent more about the CIA yeah. now. <laughs> the cats. Oh, the God, cats. Those poor fucking cats. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's rough out there. Be careful when you're hailing there. a cab, cat. It's should, true. Should we uh, take a human break and hear a word human. from our sponsors? Let's do it. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered directly to your doorstep. Mm Mm-hmm. No grocery store required. Oh, thank God. So you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that is why it is America's number one meal kit, both in our country and in my heart. In our hearts, yes, y'all. It's fall, baby. It's here. The leaves have turned in my neighborhood, and that means, like, soups on, honey. It is like yeah. cooking at home. Savory, earthy, yeah. squash. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's true. And uh, there is no better time than fall for experiencing the delicious taste and un paralleled convenience of HelloFresh. Like, do you want to feel like Top Chef? Yes. Hi. 
HelloFresh. They literally send the ingredients they travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days. So when they say hello fresh, like they mean it. They it's mean fresh. like hi fresh. Hi, it's fresh. <laughs> you know it's fresh. Plus, the pre-portioned ingredients make cooking a snap and this is my favorite thing. It cuts down so much on food waste. Like you're not going and buying that massive bundle of parsley mm-hmm. for the half teaspoon that you need for that recipe. Mm-hmm. It's honestly the most amazing thing ever. And I know that like, I'm not a huge cook, but I do like to cook when the weather gets cold, but I only have like three things that I know how to make. So mm-hmm. I can easily get stuck in a rut, but HelloFresh has so many options to choose from that you will not get stuck in your cooking rut. Last night I made these like incredible pork tenderloins with a creamy dill sauce. I'm like <gasps> freaking a s- yum. I'm like whisking a sauce on the stove and like adding ingredients. And I did that little like taste with a clean spoon that they always do on those cooking shows. Mm-hmm. And then like wiped my hand on my apron. And I was like, oh, hi, I'm Bobby Flay. This is it. I'm Bobby freaking Flay right I, now I in made, this moment. I made a roux. Yeah. Like eat. I, I- there's no beating that. No, and they walk you through it. Like, I'm simultaneously cooking this pork and the green beans and making a sauce and fluffing the couscous. Like, they walk you through every bit of it. You're going to feel like a professional chef. It's incredible. You really will. So go to HelloFresh.com slash GALS65 and use the code GALS65. That's G-A-L-S-6-5 for 65% off. Oh. Plus free shipping. So one more time, go to HelloFresh.com slash Gal65 and use code Gal65 for 65% off. Plus free shipping and honestly, treat your dinners. Treat them. You know how sometimes shoes seem to be made to be like, I don't know, torture devices that are unwearable? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Why is this our reality? I mean, I love a fancy shoe, but I have a couple pairs where it's like, oh, I can only wear these once a year because that's the only time I can deal with the pain of wearing these shoes. And for like... 60 minute stretches. Right, right. Or shoes that are so fancy that you're scared to like get a drop of dirt on them and it's like you're walking yep. on the ground. With your How feet. are you going to avoid that? With your feet. Like it's disgusting. But this is why Rothy's is the greatest thing in the world because if you want versatile shoes that are stylish, like get your fancy shoes, honey, but they're also comfortable and they're machine washable so you're not afraid of getting them dirty. You got to shop Rothy's. Tell us more, Lucy. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I got an email the other day. For, okay, but backing up just a little bit more. Back every, it up. Every single time I go to the Rothy's website, there's a new pattern. There's new colors. Mm-hmm. There's, there's new seasonal designs. Mm-hmm. I, I am absolutely obsessed because I already know that the fabric they use is there's like no break in period. No, it's flawless. It's ridiculously soft considering they're made out of recycled plastic water bottles. Mm-hmm. I can't even. Mm-hmm. And I also know that I love them because I can just throw them in my washing machine anytime they get dirty or a little bit stinky or whatever. Yep. And now I just saw their newest style. It's the city slip on sneaker. What? Uh, you have got to check it out. They're <gasps> so adorable. My other favorites are the loafers. Mm -hmm. I know you love the boots. I love the Chelsea boot, honey. You love the sneaker. Love. I mean, the point is just a classic. If you want to feel put together and just like, like you're totally rocking it, but you're also incredibly comfortable. Oh, yeah. I've also got these like really gorgeous sandals that I wore over the summer that are like this strappy, like very yeah. sexy sandals. They're like kind of like gladiator, like the yes. wrap up kind. Yeah. They're so cute. I'm obsessed with them. They have styles for every single season and they're durable. They're washable. Like I said, they're mm-hmm. so adorable. Mm-hmm. They are absolutely worth checking out. And I'm telling you, every time you go to the website, you're going to find something else that you have 
to have. Yep. And Rothy's original slip-on sneaker won the best slip-on sneaker from Self Magazine's 2022 Sneaker Awards. Okay, well, that's deserved. You gotta get on it. Also, I just gotta say, I gotta shout out this, like, Rothy's community that I feel every time I wear my Rothy's out of the house, or, Mm -hmm. like, even if I'm not, on the rare occasion I'm not, if Mm -hmm. I see somebody else wearing Rothy's, yeah, like give them a little, give them a little thumbs up. You know, yeah, it's like the it's like the boat wave, but for shoes. Absolutely, they're incredible. If you know, you know, yep. and you gotta know. Yep. So get stylish shoes that are versatile and durable enough to wear all the time with Rothy's, and get twenty dollars off your first purchase at rothys.com forward slash gals. That's r o t h y s dot com slash gals g a l s. And treat your feet. Treat them. All right, Patrick, you're filling in for Kenyon this week, which means you had to cover the fan picker case, which means you got the darkness and... Yeah, uh, we're sorry. It's really all it means. <laughs> but you got this, so take sorry. it away, buddy. You signed up for this. <laughs> Wait, am I, I, read, I read the next part? Yeah, yeah, this is all you, honey. If you want to popcorn one of us in, you yep. can. Okay. We're here. <laughs> we're here to support you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what about a candy corn? Can I candy corn mm-hmm. one of you in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> In the late 1970s, communism was in power in Afghanistan, which at the time was under the leadership of, I'm going to need some help here. We got you. Noor Noor Mohammed Taraki. Taraki. Yep. I nailed it. Yeah, you You crushed it. Taraki was the founding member of the People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, but within this party, there was division between supporters of Tariki's more extremist views and the more moderate members. Shortly after he came to power, Tariki signed a deal described as a treaty of friendship with the then Soviet Union. This will come into play later. I I love a good handshake agreement. I was also a treaty (laughs) described as a treaty of friendship sounds like an organization called Focus on the Family. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Like we know what you're trying to fucking hide. Uh Knock it off. Uh Focus on the family. You know what I mean? Like call it a treaty of friendship. It's definitely some shady bad shit. It's not great. It comes with a jerk off motion. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Tariki's efforts to improve secular education and redistribute land sounds like decent policy rollout, but unfortunately, the means of getting there meant mass executions, including that of many conservative religious leaders, Mm -hmm. and political oppression that was unprecedented in Afghan history, and this ignited a revolt by Afghan Mm Muhajideen rebels. Jeez. I know. It's all quite quite complicated. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, th- this bit I actually did know a little bit about. My sister joined the military after 9-11, yep. specifically because she wanted to go work with the women of Afghanistan. Right, And my right. sister spent, I mean, I think she spent four tours in Afghanistan over the wow. course of like 15 years. That's incredible. Yeah. It, was, it was crazy. We were just cleaning out some pictures in my mom's house, and we found all of these photos she took of the women and their kids and stuff in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the Mujahideen are a collective of different guerrilla groups operating in Afghanistan during the Afghan War, 1978 to 1992. I was mm-hmm. born in one of those years. I'll let you guess which one it was. Uh, 92, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, 92. <laughs> yep. Strong 92. Yep, yep. Big old Zoomer over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was mm-hmm. born the day Alanis Morris's album first dropped. Oh, my God. <laughs> I wish. So the war opposed the invading Soviet forces and communism in general, And they were ready to fight back. Mm -hmm. Everyone was feeling real uncomfortable about the rise of communism in Afghanistan. And Pakistani intelligence was keeping an eye on the Islamist rebel forces challenging this political takeover. Mm -hmm. This is some, like, this is some, like, heady, like, political foreign shit. I mean, the fucking Soviet Union at the time is bringing communism into Afghanistan and, like, putting people in power to expand their regime and, like, and it's we'll like get the to fucking it, like, cold war post cold war shit well, and they this have, is how there's so many resources in afghanistan yeah. like that's yeah. that's all they want but then like the american involvement i think we'll get to that in a minute if i'm not mm-hmm. mistaken is like how we invented the taliban am i wrong yep right mm-hmm. yeah yep. okay that i knew yeah i read a lot of books around 9 11 everybody i'm sure you did <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So they passed this intelligence on to the U.S., which was led by Jimmy Carter at the time. 
and encouraged the Carter administration to provide support to these rebel factions. Yeah, because we're like, communism, bad. We'll yeah. give, we'll, we'll take care of this. Mm-hmm. What is it that Carter, what's the kind of farm that Carter had? Was it like an avocado Peanuts. farm? Peanuts. Peanuts, that's what it was. A peanut farmer was in the White House. <laughs> oh my God, Roseanne Barr's got the avocado farm. And that's like not a Rose euphemism. Roseanne Barr and Jimmy Carter are very easy to mix up. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I really get it. That's I was an just, easy mistake. I was just watching Roseanne Barr. 12 years old. <laughs> uh, building houses for humanity. Yeah. Or whatever it's called. Habitat. Roseanne Barr's TikTok Habitat. is banana pants. Oh, it's nuts. And I love it. Everybody. Roseanne's? Yeah. Yes. yeah it's just BRB. like, ma'am. Man. I mean, I would, she has gone completely off the fucking deep end. I She's would say nuts. it's like take a seat, but I've ne- I haven't seen her standing in five years. Right, right. Take several <laughs> seats, as yeah, you would say. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Lay down. Lay down. So the Carter administration immediately involved the CIA, according to former CIA official Robert Gates. And this is a quote using their racist 70s terminology, not ours. Mm-hmm. Quote, the Carter administration turned to the CIA to counter Soviet and Cuban aggression in the third world, particularly beginning in mid-1979. Mm-hmm. So we were still referring to the Middle East as the third world at that <laughs> right. time. Get over right. It. Oh, God. Yeah. Paints a picture. Yeah. <laughs> So the CIA and U.S. officials started secretly meeting with leaders of these rebel forces via the Pakistani government and their existing intelligence. Mm -hmm. Then we started providing seed money to the operation. Mm -hmm. The Carter administration signed off on millions of dollars coded as non-military assistance. And this is interesting. These are funds meant to be used uh, for medical equipment, radio Mm -hmm. transmitters, and basic support needs. But of course, that's not at all what the funds were used for. (laughs) No. No. They were literally funding Afghan extremists who were working to overthrow the government. Which, like, on one hand, okay, the government is Soviet Russia. Yes. But on the other hand, it's like, is this really a fight we want to be giving seed money to? It comes back to buy the seed. You know what's so crazy, though, is that, like, you know, and I, like, speaking as a family member of a person who was in Afghanistan for many, many, many years, like, we are right now learning about the, how we got to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. We just left Afghanistan, like, a couple years ago, like a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that bananas? This is 1979 we're talking about, Mm -hmm. and Biden just pulled everybody out, like, last year. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. remember, like, at the time they were pulling everybody out, like, they were talking about how every administration from Carter to Biden had yeah. talked about doing it, and Biden finally did it. But, like, that's the span of time. It's I know. We, we got there and didn't leave. Af- Afghanistan has been under some kind of, like, colonialism or occupation for so fucking long. Yeah. And it's not sustainable. It's just no, it's and because not. like if you remember when we left, like w- like all of the different like w- they were calling them like terrorist factions that were mm-hmm. taking over the airport, marching into the cities. Like th- they awful. took Afghanistan back in in a in a in a Days. day. Yep, you know yeah. it took so little time for everything to crumble. And mm-hmm. what a for shame the for like the f- what. 50 years that yeah. we were all there and how many like American lives were lost. I mean, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's all so fucking tragic and fucked up on like every possible side of things. The only good news about all of this is that none of it is real. And we're all like a science experiment. <laughs> well, of right. an alien a simulation. Years. We're in the yeah, simulation. Yeah. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, I forget. <laughs> yeah. sometimes I forget that this is all a simulation and then right. I remember and I'm like, Oh right. No, I can drink wine at two in the afternoon. It's yeah, all fine. It's fine. Yeah. Nothing's real. I, I love that about you, Patrick. So yeah, thank you for that reminder. So much. Yeah. I just feel like it's my job to remind everybody that none of this happened. No, no, no. I'm just what? kidding. Oh my God, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, why didn't crime <laughs> listeners do know that I am team simulation? So I'm a million percent on this. Yeah. It's our well, yeah, reality. The space needle. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Space needle is not fucking real fucking at me. Okay. And continue. I'm also just confused how we got to Afghanistan with, with the world being as flat as it is. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't like. Did we act? Did we walk? I just I can't figure out how right. we got there. Right? You know? How did we not fall off the edge? Yeah, like, it's I know. Crazy, you guys. It's yeah. getting closer and closer to the edge. It's right. very concerning. Right. <laughs> Well, all of this could have been prevented if they just had QuickBooks back then and they could I know how to code yeah. all this all this money. Uh, well, if so if only it were that easy. They knew how to code it. They were doing this on purpose. <laughs> Our bookkeeper would not have let this fly. <laughs> <laughs> This started the CIA on sourcing equipment from gray market dealers all over the world. They used third-party channels to purchase old surplus equipment, such as World War II-era British Lee 
Enfield? Enfield? Yeah, we know so much about guns. I was just going to say, British Air Lee Enfield <laughs> rifles. Are those the muskets? I, sure. Sure. We sure. were going to like, put the thing in and stuff it down. I think we were past muskets by World War II, but Are also, you sure? there's no way to know. There's, there's no, no way, way to know. To know. Yeah. That a, is the truth. It's, it's a bolt action magazine fed. It's an automatic gun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There we Holy go. Holy moly. It's an intense gun. Yeah. And these guns couldn't be easily traced back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Good thinking, America. As the war progressed, however, the CIA made less of an effort to disguise their support of the Mujahideen, Mm -hmm. making little effort to cover up their activities and eventually just straight up shipping easily traced U.S.-made FM-92 Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. Because at some point you just stop giving a fuck. You know what I mean? And these things are insane. Like they, they, you can like hold it on your shoulder and shoot down like a plane. Like it's wow. They're a really intense I'm piece Googling of military that one equipment. F I M ninety two. Wow. Stinger. Yeah. It's they're big. It's literal. Bring it out the big guns. Ooh, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Kind of gnarly. <laughs> and one of them today costs thirty eight thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Wow. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Are you looking at, like, Craigslist? Like, are you in the market? <laughs> Facebook Marketplace. It was, a suggested, it was a suggested search term when I typed it in. It's like, oh. Holy shit. It's like, we see Lucy pulling out her credit card. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tapping my no, fingerprint. You know this shit's cash only. There's no, no way. There's or no Viagra. Way. On Craigslist, mm-hmm. yeah. I will accept trades. OBO. Farm right. tools. Totally. <laughs> oh, God. Cat and bed bug free home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 38,000 OBO. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the Soviet Union saw the Afghan communist government's grip of control slipping and sent troops in to maintain order. Mm-hmm. This included assassinating Noor Mohammed Tariki's rival, Hafizullah Amin, and replacing Tariki with someone they considered to be a stronger leader, a man named Babrak Kamal as Afghan president. From GuinnessWorldRecords.com, and we are told this may sound like an insane source, but it will actually make sense in just a second, so bear with me. The resources allocated to Afghanistan were dramatically increased following the December 24th, 1979 Soviet invasion. The Carter administration lifted its initial restrictions on weapons shipments and raised the budget to tens of millions of dollars. Under newly elected President Ronald Reagan barf in 1981, the CIA was given a $30 million budget for Afghan operations. That's only $10 million more than Acoustic right. Kitties. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and about $30 million more than it would have cost him to say AIDS once during his entire administration. Right. Right. Exactly. 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 <laughs> By 1984, this budget had risen to $200 million per year. At its peak in 1987, the CIA was working with an annual budget of $700 million to procure equipment and logistical support for the Mujahideen. I, no one is saying how well I'm saying that word each You're time. doing You're so doing it, great. Yes. You're doing so great. Our <laughs> silence is the award. Thank you so much. I'm in it's, awe. <laughs> it's a word that is like such an interesting word, and I cannot <laughs> believe my mouth can pronounce it. It kind of rolls off. It does. You're doing great. This is, I got to tell you, I can only read any of these words because of the amount I've listened to the Rachel Maddow show. That's it. I owe everything to Rachel. (laughs) Rachel Maddow teaches us so much. Everything I've said in this section comes from listening to the Rachel Maddow show. Perfect. (laughs) So the U.S. is dumping money into Afghanistan to undermine the Soviet Union, which brings us to why the Guinness Book of World Records (laughs) is a source here. Because Operation Cyclone was the most expensive covert action in U.S. history, between 1979 and 1989, so 10 years, the CIA spent more than $2 billion in weapons, logistical support, and training to the Mujahideen. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Nothing pro- nothing problematic about that at all, and I am sure this won't come back to bite the U.S. in the ass later. Oh, wait. And dead. Oh, shit. Shyamalan twist. Shyamalan yeah. twist. <laughs> I didn't see it coming. (laughs) Never saw this coming. Do you know that I ruined, what's the I See Dead People one? Mm -hmm. Sixth Sense. I ruined the Sixth Sense for my friend Ellen. She will, I I had not seen it, but within five minutes, I leaned over and I was like, oh, and I said the thing. You did not. I swear to God, and not because I thought, not for any other reason that I, I just was like, oh, well, in order for that to make sense, 
he would have to be. I also thing. love how because of this trauma that you've endured with your friend Ellen, you're yeah. choosing not to spoil it on this show. And this movie is like 20 years it's, old no, almost. No, it's like 30 uh, years old. That's like from, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Kenyon did the same fucking thing to me with The Village. Oh, Within yeah. Oh, yeah. three minutes. I gotta over. tell you, I think about The Village every single day. Oh, I, I love, love that movie. I, I love, love that movie too. so much. It's I'm so with Not you. the least of which because Cherry Jones is in it and I oh. love... I love Cherry Jones. Yeah, honey. Is she I the have... blind one? No. Well, sh- no, no, no. That's, no, that's Bryce, Bryce Dallas, Dallas Howard. Howard. Oh, Bryce Dallas uh, Howard. Powerful. Look, I'm not trying to start shit, but Bryce Dallas Howard stole a movie role from a friend of mine. <gasps> really? I knew, she, I knew she sucked. I and knew And the it. Twilight movies, she replaced my friend. As, as fucking Victoria? Yes. On fucking cool. And yes. I mean, and they were already replacing the original Victoria with somebody else. It should no, have been your friend. Saying. No, no, no. It was my friend. My no friend was way. the original your Victoria. Your friend was the original? <laughs> Rochelle Lefebvre. Yes. Shut up. I know. Isn't that crazy? We're not like really. We went to camp together, but like we stayed Don't in touch care. a little bit. She's our I know. best friend and I know. we <laughs> will die on this hill. Wait, can I tell you a secret though? Because I've been calling her all these years. I've been calling her Rachel Lefebvre. And they're like, no, it's Rochelle. It's Rochelle. And I was like, I'm pretty sure it's Rachel. I just, the uh, like two days ago, was going through my thing from camp where they gave all of us like a yeah, oh man, they gave all face. of us like a, a thing <laughs> that has like everyone's name and address and phone number on it. You guys, uh-huh. it's Rachel. She's changed her name professionally to Rochelle. Okay, I really love that we went from <laughs> going to bat for Rochelle to throwing her under I... every bus <laughs> for yeah. changing how she's pronouncing her name. Look, I love this. Hollywood is fickle, baby. I know. <laughs> let's I know. go. I'm just saying. Look, we got more Afghan. We got to go back to okay, Afghanistan. Okay, let's go back to Afghanistan. Okay. So over the course of 10 years from 1979 to 1989, the Soviet Union was occupying Afghanistan and the U.S., and also in Britain, we're bad, but not all by ourselves. Everybody. Right, yeah. We had help. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's funding multiple extremist groups fighting against them. Mm-hmm. Many of the figures involved in the U.S. backed struggle against the Soviet invaders would go on to become notorious terrorist commanders, including Hala Ludin Haqqani, leader of the Haqqani Network, mm-hmm. Muhammad Omar, leader of the Taliban, and, o- and Osama bin Laden, leader of Al Qaeda. Jesus. Mm-hmm. I know. So when they say that 9 11 was an inside job because of Bush, yeah. Actually, yeah. Carter and Reagan kind of did yeah. make it an inside job, which really doesn't sit well considering how in 1983, President Reagan barf met with the Mujahideen <laughs> leaders, calling them freedom fighters at the White House. Yeah. So it was like an open, not even secret that like we were funding this. And like exactly. we, we as a nation were like so anti-communist at the time. And we still are. Like yeah. they, a lot of this remains i mean you see it in a lot of trump supporters but like oh yeah so anti-communist that like no one really batted an eye at the fact that we were sending all of this money to these like pretty extreme factions in afghanistan because they were fighting against soviet rule which was like that was the big hot sexy thing to do well in not the just 50s, money. 60s, 70s 80s and now now yeah <laughs> not just money though arms Weapons. and training yeah. you know what i mean and the training ended up being one of the biggest things when the when when like the the factions of what we were calling terrorist groups yep. broke off i mean and i don't think any of this was popularly known by mm-hmm. like the me idiot me's of the world until like of after 9/11 not. <laughs> right you know right or like, until we wrote these notes but yeah right. yeah, yeah yeah totally <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say, like, the thing that never gets talked about is, like, all of these different, like, international governments coming in and, like, no one talks about the civilians, the people just Mm -hmm. trying to fucking milk their goats and live their lives and raise their kids and send their kids to school. No one, like, imagine living, like, Afghanistan's not that big of a country. No, and And Afghanistan has basically not known a time without war for, like, well over a hundred years. So many people have died. So many people who like you said, are just trying to fucking live their lives. And this has just been such a hotbed of, like, scramble for power in this region. It's so crazy. It's so fucking tragic. And you're totally right. And I appreciate you taking a pause to, like, remember the people that 
are fucking dying because of this shit. It's so, uh, one of the reasons that it's so front of mind is like I was saying, I was just home and I was going through my sister's old pictures. Mm -hmm. And she's just like an amateur photographer and she was really interested in taking pictures of the women and their kids in Afghanistan. And like these people are like, you see kids playing and they have no, like blissfully unaware. Right. And it's just like, you know, like just regular people live there. And it's Yeah, and Afghanistan has been such like a politicized topic in the US for so long that it, it, and that's intentional to dehumanize humanize the people who are who are truly suffering on yeah. all of this shit we use those tactics here stateside we use them to paint a picture of so much going on in the world it's like i'm not a giant conspiracy theorist other than the fucking space needle but like take everything you see in the media with a grain of salt and remember that there are people and families and just normal average everyday folks behind all of this shit You also, I think about the invasion of Ukraine a few months ago and how we have social media. We have on the ground journalists. We are able to see these things basically in real time. And everyone's setting their fucking Facebook profile pictures, support Ukraine, things like that, which is fine. But it's Mm -hmm. because we see all of these casualties, all of this, the effects it has on civilians. And that's Mm -hmm. why we care about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it. The same fucking thing happened here and mm-hmm. was it it ignited a war. Mm-hmm. Can we take can you give me your 60 second conspiracy on the Space Needle? Oh, it's, it's it not won't real. Take 60 seconds. It is a hologram. And all the times that I have been to Seattle, which is many people have been like, oh, look, you can see the Space Needle today. And then I turn to look at it and she gone. <laughs> we were in have a you car. Ever, <laughs> driving have you ever been up to Space Needle? Absolutely not. But even if I did go up the Space Needle, <laughs> frankly, because we are living in a simulation, yeah. and they are so advanced. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, you know, like in the uh, according to the simulation theory, you, the three of us just met today, and right. everything that we know about each other. That time that I carried your shit across, downloaded. On, yeah, it was downloaded. Like it just it was in the in the minute in the second right. before we met. Mm-hmm. And since birds also aren't real, they're all just government drones. I also yeah. have a theory that they no, are. No, that program with... failed. Remember? Uh, oh, right. <laughs> but yeah. if it had thrived, it, they would be spawned within the space needle. So that that's oh. that's my quick sixty. It's all coming together. I I like it. I'm into. I it. refuse to believe. Moving yep. on. So finally, in 1989, the Mujahideen drove the very last Soviet soldier out of Afghanistan, leaving the often disputing groups who for the last decade had remained united against communism without a common enemy and with a fuck ton of weapons paid for by the U.S. government. That's what I just said. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now that the Soviet Union was finally out of Afghanistan and on the brink of collapse, the U.S. immediately discontinued aid. Oh, my God. Yep. I can see the future coming. I know. Meaning these groups are now realizing the weapons they have are a finite resource. Mm-hmm. They did make an attempt to share power among leaders of the different groups. But by 1996, the strategy had completely imploded in on itself and a mm-hmm. war breaks out among the factions. This infighting would last four years, destroying most of the capital city of Kabul Mm -hmm. and killing more than 50,000 people. From the wreckage emerges the Taliban and they set up rule. Yep. God. And yeah, like you said before, funded and trained by the U.S. government. Yeah, I'm just going to pause and say that like I know a lot of this, but I'm reading this material provided by you and your Mm -hmm. team. And I got to say, it's fucking great. Mm -hmm. Whoever put this together did a great job. Thank you so much. It was me. Oh, my God. I got really high and went down a really (laughs) deep rabbit hole at like 1230 in the morning. And I I tried to start it yesterday because we were going to tag team it. And I'm like, this is so fucking complicated. Mm -hmm. You know what, though? Like your ability to take all of this really complicated stuff and make it like digestible is incredible. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So the aftermath of all this is obviously heavy criticism and a lack of trust in the U.S. government. From the Washington Institute org, quote, one of the greatest criticisms of the U.S. policy, especially after the rise of the Taliban, has been that the CIA directly supported Arab volunteers who came to Afghanistan to wage jihad against the Soviets, but eventually used the American arms to engage in terrorist war against the West. However, the so-called, quote, Afghan Arabs only emerged as a major force in the 1990s. Yeah, so there's like some dispute about how many like volunteers came to take up arms and then were used in this fight against the West. But like they didn't really join up until 
after this had gone down, but it's sort of that, like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Like, they, uh-huh. they yeah. fertilized the fucking egg and then the chicken came. So this is, uh-huh. that statement is just an attempt to distance the U.S. from this. Right, right. Yeah. During the resistance against the Soviet occupation, Arab volunteers played at best a cursory role. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's what you're saying. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Many Afghan specialists criticized the U.S. for merely walking away from Afghanistan after the fall of the Soviet Union. Ed Girardi, a journalist and Afghan expert, observed, quote, the United States really blew it. They dropped (laughs) Afghanistan like a hot potato. That's like my favorite fucking thing ever. (laughs) The United States really blew it. They shit the bed. They did. We did. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) And, and like, honestly, America paid the price for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we Mm -hmm. created this unstable... A country where all yep. of these different like terrorist groups like w- and we gave them so much money and art yeah. like it's you know yeah. what I mean like we yeah mm-hmm. it de- it destabilized our country a thousand exactly. percent yeah so indeed Washington's lack of engagement created a policy void in which radical elements eagerly filled like mm-hmm. that's what we're just saying yep yep. So the big issue that we've seen pointed out is that the U.S. funded these groups to take down the Soviet occupation, provided advanced weaponry, and then peaced as soon as the Soviet Union withdrew, leaving these groups in Afghanistan to fight over who takes power using the remainder of the money and weapons we provided them. Mm -hmm. Like, that's exactly what we've been talking about. Yep, that's it. In a nutshell. The Washington Institute goes on to say that by delegating responsibility for arms distribution to the ISI, Pakistan's equivalent to the CIA, the United States created an environment in which radical Islam could flourish, and with the coming of the Taliban, radical Islam did just that. Yep. God. Yep. This was an excellent rundown of Isn't it nuts? All like, of this. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. It's really and, fucked up. You know, while they continue to show the clip of like George Bush reading, you know, stories to kids and being told about 9-11, we don't Get I believe told. that story was like the hungry goat or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we can we can maybe fig- remember what story George Bush was reading to children at the time that he was informed about the 9-11 attacks. But yeah, we're very intentionally not told about the U.S. history and involvement in Afghanistan that like kind of helped it's- create the environment that allowed that to happen. And kind of. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And like gave the money and gave the arms. And it, it really is like. Yeah, I mean, I remember at the time of 9-11, imagine, like, trying, like, you're a journalist who, like, knows all of the history, and you're like, fuck, how do I explain it to these idiots? You right. know what I mean? you are mm-hmm. all so riled up now and yeah. ready to go to war. Like, yeah. holy shit. Mm-hmm. Giving, like, the president the ultimate authority to declare war without, yeah. like, making it an act of Congress. Remember that? Yeah. 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 Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah. It was just so much ugliness. It still is, but it just, yeah, ugh. it's not just good. Decades of ugliness. Yeah. yeah. Well, Patrick, you took on a lot with going over those notes, and thank you for diving in. And you didn't have to candy corn us once. You didn't have to candy corn us a single time. You f- are fucking amazing. And my we're gonna, flesh. yeah, we're gonna hear another quick word from our sponsors, and then I will wrap this up with my little story, my little ditty about Jack and my Diane. My little story. Mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. little story. When it comes to therapy and psychiatry, getting the help you need has never been this simple. Mm -hmm. Like, listen up. When you're able to access your provider from the comfort of your device, it means mental health care can be on your schedule, Mm -hmm. literally on your smartphone at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. And alleviating the wait times to get an appointment or the travel time to get to the office Mm -hmm. can free up that time for the rest of your life and also, like, save you a bunch of anxiety. Yeah. And money. Gas is not cheap. Yes, but speaking from, you know, from my experience, it it helps so much if it's just, like, immediately accessible. Mm -hmm. And Talkspace is so convenient and accessible, it helps me feel supported around the clock. Tell us more. I love Talkspace. Talkspace lets you send messages to your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform, which allows you to update them on like challenges, triumphs, anything that you might be facing, but in real time. Like you don't have to wait that month between appointments and hopefully, I guess, write down or somehow remember 
<laughs> everything that might have happened in that last month that you want to talk about with your therapist. Like, A, who has the time? No. B, who has the memory? No. I, I can't. So with Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing and they can check in with you like every day. It is so good to have as a growth and accountability tool when that, like like Lucy said, that accessibility, you have it right there in your pocket. Therapy can help you shift your perspective. It can help you find tools to cope in difficult times. It can truly be a guiding light. And I've been using Talkspace for several years now, and I cannot <laughs> tell you enough how You'll never go back. it is. I will never go back. Their therapist network is so comprehensive. I mean, they have thousands of licensed therapists with years of experience in over 40 specialties. So maybe you're dealing with depression. Check. Hi. Anxiety. Check. Check. Hi. Trauma. Check. Check. Hi. (laughs) But you could also be experiencing, you know, substance use disorder. They have licensed therapists for that. Maybe you need some assistance with anger management. They have licensed therapists for that too relationship Uh, stuff yeah relationship issues that's always something that you could talk to a therapist about maybe you have struggles around food and eating there is so much that we face every day and getting that support can be an absolute game changer so can't recommend it highly enough and as a listener of this podcast you'll get a hundred dollars off your first month with talkspace To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com and make sure to use that promo code GALS to get $100 off your first month and to show your support for this show. That is GALS, G-A-L-S, and Talkspace.com. And treat your brain. Treat it. Y'all, I have done everything to get silky, strong, healthy hair. And you can believe me when I say everything, because I mean everything. I've purchased Other people's it. hair. Yeah, there's other people's <laughs> hair on my head. But I've also done, like, mayonnaise masks. Yeah. Yo, that was an experience. Just all the hair masks. If you want to smell like egg salad, that then go down that path. But if you don't, <laughs> if you're tired of those ineffective hair treatments and you're hungry not for egg salad, but to try something that actually works, give Vegamore a try like we did. Vegamore has transformed our hair, our collective hairs. Mm-hmm. Their clean and vegan approach to hair health uses smart botanicals that promote visibly thicker, fuller, longer looking hair. Uh, it, it, even just after one try, I'm just like, oh my God, do I, does my hair always look this good? No, it's because I use Vegamore. <laughs> with help from Vegamore, get healthy, beautiful looking hair without the use of harmful chemicals. All of their products are cruelty free and never contain potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones or any of those other things that you just can't pronounce. Mm-hmm. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health. Their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit works together to create visibly thicker hair and improve the hair from the roots Mm -hmm. all the way to the tips. Oh, yeah. So you just massage that shampoo right into your scalp for 60 seconds, and then you follow it up with that conditioner all down the lengths. It is Mm -hmm. as simple as that. The kit that we got comes with this, like, kind of toothy, like, rubbery scalp massager yeah it's like it's like a vinyl brush and i am obsessed with it i use it to lather shampoo and like comb and then comb the um conditioner through my hair yeah in the shower it is like the most luxurious shower routine ever especially if you have kind of longer hair it helps to distribute it I yeah. use it to um, rub that serum in because mm-hmm. I have really thin hair like on my uh, upper part of my scalp. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So not only does it work, it's effective, but it also just feels really good. And it smells amazing. It like does. the products themselves. I love them. Mm-hmm. Having Vegamore as my go-to shampoo and conditioner is a game changer for my overall hair health. Like I said, they I also have their brow and lash serum i love the lash serum it's so like it feels so indulgent but it's so it just uh, it just smells good it feels good it's like in my price range i absolutely love it so with vega more there is no risk when trying because they have a 90 day money back guarantee but with 91 percent of customers saying they saw visibly thicker hair with vega more mm-hmm. in just mm-hmm. three months 
You're not going to want to run out. You're going to want to keep your supply yep. robust. You got to check out Vegamore. Absolutely. So give your hair exactly what it's been craving with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash gals and use that code gals to save 20% on your first order. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash gals. Code gals to save 20% on your first order and treat your hair. Treat it. So every morning when I wake up and I go to get dressed, I got to be honest, one of the things that I dread the most is trying to like figure out what bra I've steeled myself Mm-hmm. to wear that mm-hmm. day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you have to what, take a deep breath before you clip it yeah, on. Yeah, like what have I emotionally prepared <laughs> yeah. to wear? <laughs> yep. It, it, it's also a little bit hard because we both work from home, so it's like, mm-hmm. do I need a bra? To bra or not to bra? That, that is, is the question. That is indeed the question, but ever since we turned over to third love... Mm-hmm. I mean, it's essentially just like wearing your most comfortable jammies, your cami, yeah. whatever. It's boob jammies. It is boob jammies. Mm-hmm. In particular, Third Love's 24-7 classic t-shirt bra. Mm-hmm. First of all, it makes your boobies look amazing. Yep. Period. Hello. It's yep. also incredibly comfortable. It's super supportive. It's not going to show through your clothes. It's not going to have those those gappy straps on your yeah. chest. Yeah. I just I I hate it when I when when my clothes fit that way and then like mm-hmm. now I've been seeing it on other people and I'm just like, "Oh, we could all do a little bit better." Right. Right. You want you want to like start proselytizing about third love. Exactly. But this t-shirt bra, it's made millions of people with boobs Mm-hmm. Very, very happy. It's designed for your body, and it even comes in half cup sizes, so you'll always get the perfect fit. Honestly, I can so relate to you th- thinking about putting on a bad bra. Ugh. Like when all your other bras are dirty, and you've, you've waited too long to do laundry, and then there's that last sad bra in the drawer. It's got like loose straps. Yeah, that you've been avoiding and you have to like stare into the void before like to talk yourself into putting it on. Uh Uh-huh. And then and then you don't feel yourself or feel good or comfortable all day. You're thinking about it all day long. You're thinking about it all day long. You're fussing with it. That tag that won't stop biting into your back. Awful. I The wires. The wires that like loose clip in the back Mm -hmm. that keeps like poking at your spine. Mm -hmm. I know everyone out there that has worn a bra can picture this exact moment. Absolutely. But I'm telling you, then you're going to switch over to a third love bra like, you know, the 24-7 t-shirt bra, which is my personal favorite. It is so amazing. It's like a memory foam mattress for your (laughs) boobies. And you're going to feel so good when you put it on. Your boobs are going to look amazing. Like, it, my boobs, I've got some saggy Bettys, okay? They like to hang out down by my belly button. You have They've beautiful always, breasts. They're gorgeous, but they like they like to hang. I put on this t-shirt bra, and it's like they're growing out of my collarbone. I don't even recognize them. I'm like, <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. <laughs> then I put on, you know, just a casual outfit, a shirt and jeans, and I am a goddess a shapely yes a like curvaceous hourglass golden hour beauty and it's all because of this bra and third love made it so much easier to find a bra that looked and felt good because you just take the fitting room quiz and they like literally custom help you find the right bra for you it is unbelievable and your bra size can change over six times throughout your life. Six times. Unreal. So take that fitting room quiz and then like, take it again. Third Love makes it so easy to find a bra that actually fits with that quiz. It's like a personal shopper, but it's better. It focuses on size, breast shape, fit issues, the style that you prefer, and then all of that helps find a bra that's perfect for you. It's helped over 18 million people find their true bra size, and you could be next, baby. I hope you're next. Mm-hmm. Ditch your bad bras. Get a better one that makes you look and feel great. 
Upgrade your bra today and get 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash gals, G-A-L-S. That's 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash gals and treat your puppies. Treat them. Okay, so friends, lovers, you know I can't do an episode about the CAA without talking about their insane LSD mind control experiments. <laughs> oh my god. I can't I not read do some it. of this. It's so fucked. Up. It's so crazy because I've been on LSD the whole time we've been recording. Yeah, you but know you haven't I mean? like you yeah. haven't lost your mind once. Oh, not Lucy, yet. We know. Yeah. <laughs> Did either of you see that Wormwood documentary on Netflix? No. no. It's about the CIA using LSD. Oof. Y'all, it's, it's wow. bad. And there's so much to it that I didn't include because it goes far and wide, as our wide pairing suggests. Also, yeah. I'm drunk at this point, so good luck. <laughs> <laughs> also, Candy fi- corn us in. No, exactly. I mean, I'm going to soldier through. I also finally read Stephen King's Firestarter this year, so I'm like super sucked into this rabbit hole because I had oh, to get wow. ahead of the Zac Efron reboot. You know what, though? That happened to me when I read that um, his, the time travel JFK one, the, mm-hmm. I can never remember oh, the Oh, yeah, 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 19... 11, 11, 22, 16, yeah. whatever it was. I became then obsessed with time travel. Anyway. Yeah, I totally get it. So this yeah. was that was the inspiration. So I know we're living in bizarro times right now, but the Cold War era was rife with conspiracy theories on every level, including high levels of government. Mm-hmm. And it was like the 1950s, the CIA, as we know, had like just been assembled yeah. a couple of years before. And like McCarthy and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the it's all... It's it's all a whole thing. So during this time, the CIA became convinced that communist powers had developed a way to control human minds, be it through drugs or psychological techniques or a combination of both. They leaned really heavily on the it's drugs. They've created a drug that can instigate both mind control and also like truth telling. Mm-hmm. And that whole like truth serum thing, like we still fucking is that look a into thing? that. Yeah, is that, yeah. There, it's there not is, real. Oh, it's not. There's not. No, I thought there was a truth serum. I mean, in Harry Potter, there super is. <laughs> <laughs> also, in, in Alias, there was one. In Alias, there was one. In my world, it's just wine. Yeah, is yeah, like yeah, truth yeah, serum. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, we don't have a legitimate, scientifically backed. Truth serum. We just I don't. gotta say, we definitely. Speaking of things that America's dropped the ball on, magic. Why do we like, not have that? We Why just do we not have like, magic? I think that we have, should invest more in magic and figure out how to get these things. I completely. My kid wants a agree. unicorn. Okay, I would Done. like to make that happen. Honestly, they could clone Dolly, but they can't put a fucking horn on a horse. It what are we doing here? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Where are my taxpayer dollars going? Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I support you in all things. The so, next CIA project. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Secret mission. So the CIA got this idea in their heads that American prisoners of war who had been held by communist Russia, China, and North Korea had been brainwashed and mind controlled into like team communism, which is like. It's unlikely that they had been mind controlled. It is entirely likely that there was brainwashing, that there were physical and psychological torture, Mm -hmm. and that like most of these people likely returned to the U.S. were released from being prisoners of war with a whole slew of psychological issues, including PTSD that we simply didn't acknowledge or really understand. Yeah, Stockholm Syndrome. All the shit that we didn't really take seriously in the 1950s. So, like, they were like, ah, mind control. That's yep. the answer. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're, well, they're you look fucking at it, doing mind control. Just, like, thinking of images of, like, North Korean soldiers and everyone's, mm-hmm. like, goose-stepping in unison. Like, Oh, mm-hmm. God. If, if you didn't understand as much about psychology as yep. we do today, it would. It seems it's not pretty reasonable to I be like, it. oh, they've all been dosed. Right. Something. Yeah. <laughs> they must have a mind control. Drug. Yeah. So in response, the CIA begins its own secret program called MK Ultra, which I could Stop only it. read as Michelob Mick Ultra. Mick Ultra. Yep. Absolutely. So, Mick Ultra. I will only be referring to MK Ultra as Mick Ultra for the rest of this. <laughs> Their secret my program first called Wine Cooler. Of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Franzia. <laughs> Boone's Farm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they launch McUltra to search for a mind control drug <laughs> that can be weaponized against enemies. And uh, I would argue that McUltra is kind of a mind control drug. So maybe they nailed it. <laughs> kind of. If you drink a hundred of them. 
So this operation was launched under the leadership of then CIA director Alan Dulles. Yes, all Allens, who put in charge a chemist named Sidney Gottlieb. He ran this program for over a decade, starting in the 1950s. Experiments were conducted all over the country at universities and research centers on consenting volunteers, though some consenting under pretty vague pretenses, which made this operation easier to fund, at least in that way, covertly as like medical research. But a lot of shady shit was going on that was not on the book. So more alarmingly than volunteers of this research program being experimented on. There were many who were forced into these experiments at prisons in the United States, as well as detention centers abroad in Japan, Germany, and the Philippines. And just like people, which we'll get to. So experiments <laughs> well, included all people. Yeah, well, right. But like outside of just prisons, like mm-hmm. they put together some fucking crazy ruses to get people on LSD. It was nuts. Okay. Wow. So there's a fly in my face. Experiments included administering LSD to psych patients. Prisoners, oh. yep, yep, drug addicts and sex workers, quote, Jeez. people who could not fight back, as one agency officer put it. Yeah. So the most vulnerable who aren't going to, like, do anything Sue. about this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They also administered LSD to CIA employees at random. Like, one guy was dosed with CIA, like, at a Christmas party and had LSD. a full-blown... Sorry, yes, he was dosed with LSD. <laughs> I'm drunk. At a Christmas party, had like a full blown meltdown and then tried to like armed rob a bank. Like it was nuts. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. They did it to military personnel, doctors, other government agents, and members of the general public to study their reactions. LSD and other drugs were often administered without the subject's knowledge or informed consent, which is a violation of the Nuremberg Code. And the U.S. had agreed to follow the Nuremberg Code after World War II, but the CIA was like, fuck it, we're just going to give people LSD and not tell them and just see what happens. I mean, they break the laws all the time. All the time, yeah. So the aim of this was to find drugs which would bring out deep confessions or wipe the subject's mind clean and program them as a robot agent. Jesus so, hell. Yeah, that's like nightmare fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Kinzer, a journalist who spent years investigating this program, said, quote, Gottlieb wanted to create a way to seize control of people's minds, and he realized it was a two-part process. First, you had to blast away the existing mind. Second, you had to find a way to insert a new mind into that resulting void. We didn't get too far on number two, but he did a lot of work on number one. Oh, my wow. God. Blast yeah. away the blast existing away. mind. Yep. I mean, so, it does kind of blast away your existing mind. I've never done LSD, but I've done a lot of other drugs, so I can only imagine. I cannot. Like, the most I've ever done... Is was is like alcohol. <laughs> Patrick I, does alcohol, you guys. Does alcohol. I do alcohol. I've never eaten the marijuana. I've never. I've only smoked the marijuana like one or two times. Honey. I'm just like run I, for office. Let's go. You're yeah, clean really. as a whistle. I'm sure. Like th- I, I probably have skeletons in other areas. You never inhaled. You right, could exactly. work at the CIA. I would never fucking pass a drug test in a million years. So I have taken LSD and I will tell you it blasts the existing mind. mind. Oh, my God. They're not giving like recreational doses. They're giving. Uh Yeah. They're trying to blast your mind. Yeah. Yeah. It would be terrifying. Oh, so I uh, I cannot imagine. History.com says, quote, McUltra's mind control experiments generally (laughs) centered. (laughs) I'll never stop. (laughs) McUltra. (laughs) McUltra. Generally centered around behavior modification via electroshock therapy, hypnosis, polygraphs, radiation, and a variety of drugs, toxins, and chemicals. Jesus Christ. So bad. These experiments relied on a range of test subjects, some who freely volunteered, some who volunteered under coercion, some who had absolutely no idea they were involved in a sweeping defense research program. So they didn't even know this was like a CIA. Or they had no idea. They were just like their drinks were spiked, basically. They, yeah, uh. it was just a ra- you were at a restaurant. Yep. Server brought your drink. And yep. the next thing you know, you're robbing a bank. And the <laughs> server is watching you because they're actually a CIA agent uh-huh. and they want to see how you respond. <laughs> So they would experiment on people (laughs) from mentally impaired boys at a state school to American soldiers to, quote, sexual psychopaths at a state (gasps) hospital. That's me. They're talking about my brethren. That's what they're talking about. I feel so seen. Dose the sexual psychopaths. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> so Mick Ultra programs. It's just another Friday night on Fire Island, if you ask me. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is this is a thousand percent what the Republicans think gay culture is. Yeah. A thousand percent. percent. Oh my God, Mitch McConnell! If you had any idea how he's fucking listening, bo- he loves I know. this podcast. <laughs> he loves it. Almost he and Joe Rogan. Joe. Yeah. yeah. He and Joe Rogan have a weekly uh, Zoom call to talk totally. about the episodes that just came out. A yeah. recap. Yeah. They yeah. have their own podcast to review our podcast. They yeah. do. They don't have a lot of listeners, but I love it. <laughs> that happened to me and Jillian once. There actually was a podcast who like did a whole episode about how bad True Crime Obsessed is. Amazing. It was like, these, like, <laughs> these like three straight guys just breaking down like how oh. gay I was, how like what like what like I, like what a dumb woman she, it was unreal. I listened oh to the whole my. thing. I know. I listened um, to the you're whole You're gonna need whole to send that to me because I don't want to give them listens, but I totally. super want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I and then I want to email them and recommend that they talk about wine and crime. I so. know. I wish they had done like a video so I could like do edit on TikTok. I have a we all have a literal cross stitch of our favorite one star review oh. where the review just says bad. <laughs> yeah, I, he- I hear they're playing this on repeat in Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> And we have it cross stitch. Mine's hanging above the sink in my kitchen. Oh I mean, I'm God. so proud of it. That when, is amazing. When three fucking cishets make a whole podcast episode about you, you know you've done it. Like I know. you took yeah. up so much I know. space I'm in jealous. their sad little life. I'm so I know. jealous. What was it anyway. called? I d I can't even remember. I just like, fine. I Googled we'll the podcast it. and it came up. Yeah. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> we got <So> you. So <laughs> the CIA considered prisoners especially good subjects as they were willing to give consent in exchange for extra recreation time or commuted sentences. That's, That's not called they... consent. No, it's that not. That is literally the opposite of what the word consent means. It's coercion. They're also exactly. easier, easier to observe if they're yep. just in a prison cell. Yep. One prisoner consent. in consent. Oh I know. my god! Please don't make me go on my forty-five minute consent rampage. I know, I know, and that was part of the quote, not me saying oh, they course. gave consent. No, 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 no. Yes. Of course, you of know, course. listeners at home might not know, but yeah. yes, insert yeah. forty-five minute rant here. Engineered, Mick yeah, Ultra? no, yeah. <laughs> this was my passion project. Oh my god! So one prisoner, infamous mob affiliate Whitey Bulger, which we've talked about him in other episodes, was experimented on as part of this program while he was in prison, and spoke of his experience later on. Ooh. He said he experienced quote total loss of appetite, hallucinating, the room would change shape, hours of paranoia, and feeling violent. We experienced horrible periods of living nightmares and even blood coming out of the walls. Guys turning into skeletons in front of me. I saw a camera change into the head of a dog. I felt like I was going insane. No, wow. I, I don't believe in torture, obviously. No, I'm no. not sad that Whitey Bulger had a bad day in jail. Oh, that guy's mm. like responsible for the murder of like 100 people. Right. It's He's bad. <laughs> But, yeah, he's real bad. <laughs> yeah, I, he's not the poster child of the the ethics no. of this situation. But yeah. he he was like one person who talked about their experience, so totally. I got the sound bite. Yeah, yeah, t- totally. He gave the sound bite. Mm-hmm. So in one particularly absurd experiment, the CIA set up brothels in San Francisco and hired sex workers to lure men into the brothel and unknowingly give them LSD. The theory was that these Johns would be too ashamed to tell anyone what had happened, and therefore this run of experiments would be kept under wraps, just like on its own. Mm-hmm. They grossly named the operation <laughs> Operation Midnight Climax. Come on! First of all, Midnight Climax, that's my drag name. But oh. enough! I know. I mean, on the nose. I love it. Yeah. God. So men were lured to the brothels by sex workers who would bring them into rooms equipped with two-way mirrors and CIA agents just jacking off on the other side, watching them Fucking and filming creeps. the sessions. Oh. I mean, yeah. For like p- peer review. Pretty much. Right. For oh. the CIA. <laughs> and the Johns would be provided with cocktails that they didn't know were laced with LSD, which like, again... The, these people are not great, but, like, don't drug them without knowing yes, what the fuck is going on. Of course. Right? So the agent in charge, a man named George Hunter White, and his CIA cronies would watch them have sex and, quote, evaluate the effects of LSD doses being given to the unsuspecting Johns. What the fuck? Yep. 
So this is uh, another quote from History.com. Quote, though the CIA piloted these safe houses as a stage for testing the effects of LSD, safe house being a brothel, White's interest shifted to another element of his observa- observations, the sex. Ugh. The San Francisco house became the center of what one writer called the CIA carnal operations. Oh, God. I hate the, I hate the straights so much. We yeah. ruin everything. <laughs> As officials began asking new questions about how to work with, in their terms, prostitutes, how they could be trained and how they would handle state secrets. Because they were working with so many sex workers to lure in these unsuspecting Johns. Mm-hmm. The agency also analyzed when, in the course of a sexual encounter, information could be best extracted from a source, eventually concluding that it was immediately after sex. Oh, come on. <laughs> but perhaps unsurprisingly, much of White's actions were driven by pure voyeurism. So he's trying to like very loosely shroud this experimentation in how could we use these tactics to get information out of targets. Justify give, your grossness. Give them LSC. Yeah. Hire a sex worker to fuck them and then interrogate them and they'll hand over like state secrets. Oh my God. We're never going to fucking do that, you guys. No. <laughs> but when, I mean, when you could just as easily take state secrets right out of the Oval Office, put right. them in a broom closet in your beach house. At fucking yeah. Mar-a-Lago. It's so much easier, you guys. We don't even need to hire a sex worker. No. But like yeah. sex work is real work, so like definitely yes. hire them. But like, yes. you know. But now for you, we don't need it for this. No, exactly. So he, this fucking guy, White, says, quote, I toiled wholeheartedly in the vineyards because it was fun, fun, fun. Where else could a red-blooded American boy lie, kill, cheat, steal, rape, and pillage with the sanction and blessing of the all highest? Who is That's this what this, quote from? This is the guy fucking, what's his face, the CIA agent who is running this like brothel experiment. I know it's about him. Did he he say those words? He said this about the process where it was like, I got to do whatever I wanted sanctioned by the CIA and the American government. Yeah. Wow. What a massive piece of shit. Yeah. So this operation was deemed successful enough to open a second fake brothel location just across the Golden Gate Bridge in Marin County. It's a franchise. It's a franchise. (laughs) Yeah. So White now had two locations to get his rocks off and he encouraged other agents to do the same. One agent later said in an interview, quote, you could bring people in for quickies after lunch. The CIA, everybody. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's and taxpayer the, dollars. Yeah. Paying for that quickie. A lot of them. And the Marin County location was more secluded than the bustling San Francisco spot so they could get away with a lot weirder shit there. It was like a dumping ground for the weird shit they wanted to try. So one reporter wrote that, quote, there, the technical services staff scientists tested such McUltra specialties as stink bombs, itching and sneezing powders, and diarrhea inducers. Stop it. Oh, my God. All things I don't need. I have all of this naturally. (laughs) Yeah. TSS's Ray Treichler, the the Stanford chemist, sent these harassment substances out to California for testing by White, along with such delivery systems as a mechanical launcher that could throw foul-smelling objects 100 yards. So the CIA is putting money into seeing how far we could launch a stink bomb at, like, an enemy, I guess. Oh, my like, God. They're just playing with toys. Yeah. They also sent over glass ampules that could be stepped on in a crowd to release any of Trichler's powders, a fine hypodermic needle to inject drugs through the cork in a wine bottle... And drug coated <laughs> swizzle sticks because it was like the 60s. You got to have that home bar with the little stir stick. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, this is a quote from medium.com quote, At the least, Operation Midnight Climax was a failure and an embarrassment for the CIA. It provided inconclusive, unscientific results with scant actionable intelligence applications. It besmirched the reputation of the CIA, both in terms of ethics and practicality, and negatively affected the lives of hundreds of people. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So the CIA's experiments with LSD persisted until 1963 before coming to a fairly anticlimactic end. 
In the spring of 1963, a man named John Vance, who was a member of the CIA Inspector General staff, learned about the project's, quote, surreptitious administration to unwitting non-voluntary human subjects and was like, we can't fucking do this anymore. (laughs) Shut it the fuck down. So though the McUltra directors tried to convince the CIA's independent audit board that the research should continue, the inspector general insisted the agency follow new research ethics guidelines and bring all the programs on non-consenting volunteers to an end. No consequences. They just had to stop doing it. They did this for over a decade. They're just no like, consequences. Hey guys, cut no it one out. went to jail. Unbelievable. They, they all fucking retired with their pensions. Like, not a thing happened. They were just told, oh, no, can't do that anymore. Oh, my God. Yep. There were real human victims as a result of these programs, including at least one death, that of a scientist who worked with the CIA. I kind of mentioned this earlier, who was given LSD without his knowledge. I don't know if it's the same guy who robbed a bank. I think this is a different person. Here's hoping. That's a lot of trauma for one yeah, person. It is. Well, and so this person was given LSD without their knowledge and his experience led him to take his own life. He like wow. jumped out of a building. I yeah. read that. Quite a few people who they experimented right. on took their own lives. Ended up dying by suicide because mm-hmm. they're, they were so psychologically altered after this experience. Well, though, I mean, just the simple fact of thinking that you're losing your mind because yeah. you d- don't ever get an answer of like, oh, no. hey, we you have no idea what happened you. to you. Yeah. So I- this, this individual surviving family has since sued for damages and maintains that their loved one was murdered by the CIA's negligent experimentation. And I totally agree with them. Mm-hmm. Same. Yeah. So though the majority survived these experiments, many suffered permanent mental and psychological degradation and the true number of whom we will never know because yeah. like they, the CIA, there's very few documents remaining about this time, this like legacy of the CIA. Most of it was destroyed so that we just won't know a lot of these details. And most of the people that were involved in these experiments are now dead. God. Can you and, imagine? And never, like- and never talked. I just can't imagine being on LSD by choice, but yeah. I certainly cannot imagine being on LSD like not by knowing? Not, knowing. not knowing exactly. Oh my god, it's so scary! It's so yeah. fucking scary. I can't. The CA is fucking nuts. I wonder and, if you were yeah. accidentally on LSD the time that you watched the Space Needle disappear. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that would sense check yeah. out. Yeah. That- yeah. <laughs> Well, that is my case, and we have a couple people to thank today. First and foremost, our fan picker, Emily Spindler, yes. for picking this incredible topic. Yes, this and is for having one. that like badass last name, Spindler. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Mm-hmm. The Spindler Spindler. Yeah. Spin- okay. <laughs> Not the best one to go with, but Tinder Spindler is fine. <laughs> I like the idea that she like she's just a type A person and she's got a to-do list for the day. She calls it Spindler's List. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that's yeah. not problematic. We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that one's fine. And most, most thanks in the world to you, Patrick. Tell the oh. world where they can find you on the internet. Yeah, if you want to check out my podcast, it's called True Crime Obsessed. We recap uh, true crime documentaries with humor, heart, and sass. It's so fucking good, you guys. I can't. Thank you. We, you know, we we do find some laughs on the margins, but we never make the laughs at the at the expense of the victim or the crime. Yes. You know, that's very important to us. And so you can find us anywhere you get your podcast. You can find True Crime Obsessed Pod on TikTok. I think it's True Crime Obsessed Podcast on the Instagram. And I am on Instagram. It's Patrick. Heinz underscore. God bless. And it's weird spelling. It's H I N D for David S for Sam. You know it's what like I mean? It's like the hind quarters, the yeah. hinds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nary an E or a Z in there anywhere. You know? I love it. So not well, the ketchup, the back. Not legs. the ketchup. I wish. I would say that's like the Teresa Heinz Carey fortune. Uh, yeah. I want if her money. Only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right? Don't we yeah. all? Uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. My Thank pleasure so for, having for having me when I got time. your message asking if I would do this. I was like, oh, my God, I, you had asked me if I could come to your live show. And I wished I could have been I there. Know. I would have been there in a heartbeat. I was just I on tour with my podcast, too. I get it. We all got to fucking work. You've got like a goddamn Broadway show. You got shit yes. to do, yeah, baby. No shit. <laughs> you got shit to do. Yes, yes. All so right. thank you for carving out a couple hours for us today. And, my pleasure. Uh, we love you. We love all of you love people. You. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.
Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at wineandcrimepod. If you have questions, answers, or recommendations to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! The new COVID-19 vaccine is now available. The Fulton County Board of Health has updated COVID booster shots and flu vaccines to fight the latest variants of each illness. Remember, vaccines work. We've done an excellent job of staying up to date on vaccines, reducing the number of illnesses in our community. Continue to protect yourself and others by making an appointment at the nearest Board of Health location. The Fulton County Board of Health is here to serve you. Stay current. Visit FultonCountyBOH.com or call 770-520-7500 for more info.